So what I have here is a couple of different types of tea. Hmm. So I'd like you to smell each one. They're all different types. We have uh, this is just some black berries tea. Hmm. This is some black piece of whales. Nice. Uh, oolong tea and uh, Dereeling is another black tea. Um, so, you know, just smell them, decide which one you like the best, and uh, okay. you could draw a picture of what you think about sure. it. Sure. That's nice. That's nice as well. Yeah, I like that one. Well, I think I had like the most, yeah, visual experience with this one. Hmm. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, you got it with the nails? Mm -hmm. It's really complex. It's like certain smells. I'm thinking of like the different places. Uh huh. I think that tea originated from. It's an Irish breakfast tea, but I think really? they grow it in uh, somewhere in Nepal. Ah, because yeah, I get a, I get a very like. Yeah, it's a really nice. It's a nice blend of tea. It's black. Yeah. Um, I have a lesson uh, here in painting class that's uh, that is uh, to utilize music and the mood. Music is a great way to mm -hmm. uh, access different moods. Uh, music can be happy. Music can be sad. Music can be um, uplifting. Music can uh, make you um, excited. Uh, music can make you angry. Uh, so to create a playlist of music that creates a certain mood. Yeah. And close your eyes, think about the colors, because um, uh, color is, is hugely a part of mood. Think about the colors that would be appropriate for that, and then start to, uh, start to paint uh, based, on, based on those colors. And uh, music can be utilized as a tool to discover certain moods. So um, what I d realized a lot in college and after college was that the music that I was listening to had a, uh, an effect on mm -hmm. the end result. So if, for example, as an illustrator, uh, somebody called me up and they, were, they said, I want you to do this uh, old-timey uh, illustration um, that looks like it's from, uh, from uh, you know, a comic in like the 1940s or something, then I would listen to nothing but music from the 1940s. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, if somebody called me up and they were like, uh, I need a, a portrait of, um, of a band uh, that, uh, that's dubstep, then I'd listen to nothing but dubstep. So uh, while you're working on a piece of art, I think it's really important to make sure that the music that you're listening to um, inspires that piece of art.
close your eyes, think about the colors, because um, uh, color is, is hugely a part of mood. Think about the colors that would be appropriate for that, and then start to uh, start to paint uh, based on based on those colors. High carbon. High carbon's harder to hit, harder to like mold, and like it doesn't form um, easily. But uh, mild steel, same thing as this. Easier to hit, and it bends easier. Now, where do you usually buy your metals from? The cheapest place is Home Depot. So anything in like the metal section, I can just use. The thing is that I have to be careful of uh, galvanized steel or metal because like chrome mm -hmm. I can't use chrome because the fumes that it'll burn off is quite poisonous oh really okay. so yeah I gotta watch out for those so now do you buy in like uh, bars or is it yeah or just rods bars anything I can get my hands on really okay. so now how many different uh, pieces have you made do you think or is it too many to count uh, really too many to count actually okay. Um, yeah. So you made the bracelet, um, the, hook. the hook, the poker, anything else that, you know, major? More bracelets. I've made, I have made tongs, my own tongs. Um, I've made a barbecue fork. That's pretty good. I have made knives. Knives, right. Yeah. And How sharp did you get them? Like, cutting they're, ability? They're, they, they can cut. They can cut. It's, and it's, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to do a knife or oh, why is that? Because after you make the edge, you have to let it air dry, like air cool down, and then that makes it softer to use. And then you file and sharpen an edge, and you go back and you treat the metal so it becomes harder and it doesn't like uh, break. And that'll take some time, and it it doesn't always work the first time. Now, what's the treating process? Is that it's um... when you you heat it up to a certain temperature and then you quickly cool it down in like oil. So does water. that harden it? Yeah, that hardens it quite a bit. Okay, now, so is steel the only metal you've worked with? Like, have you worked with any of the higher carbons ever? Um, may, like I, I've used only really steel. Uh, I've used mild and I've used um, higher carbon. Uh, the higher carbon stuff that I've used is on my knife. My knife is made out of coil springs of a car. Oh, nice. Yeah, and um, it was hard, harder to use. I think that's all we have time for today. All right. Thanks, Al. Thanks. It was good. Hello and welcome. I, as always, am Henry Smith, and today joined by Mr. Zahner, teacher at Halston High School. Um, so what, what subject do you teach here? I teach history. Mm -hmm. And I understand you're uh, a drummer. Yeah. So uh, how long have you been drumming? Um, formerly since fourth grade. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I always wanted a drum set. Um, I still remember banging on pots and pans and those, you know, uh, I don't know, those McDonald's Happy Meal buckets that they used to give out at Halloween. Mm -hmm. So drumming, you, so did you play in a school band? Yeah, uh, yeah. I graduated from uh, King Philip in uh, 1999. I had played in um, the jazz band, uh, jazz combo, indoor percussion, marching band, concert band. So all different kinds of uh, yeah. drumming? Mm -hmm. um, I played with a, a band um, called Father and Sons. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, similar members of the Daybreakers. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, just freelancing. I can't really play a lot because I'm a teacher and have a family. So um, when there's time. And do you have like a specific sound you kind of grab, grab take towards? Like any influences, drummers? Or... Oh, yeah. Um, it just depends on the style of music. 
Mm-hmm. So if it's like uh, jazz, bebop jazz, I definitely gravitate more toward uh, Tony Williams. Um, it's a very aggressive, dark, simple sound. Um, and let's see, for rock, definitely John Bonham. Of course. Um, his, his kick and snare and feel, it just doesn't get better than that. Um, for fusion styles and just general approach to the instrument, um, I go for more of a uh, somewhere between Steve Gadd and Vinnie Calvin. So I like my drums to speak, to have a sound and a voice, but to be very dynamic. To be very, very quiet, responsive, yet loud, like kind of tear the roof off. So do you kind of play like all different kinds of music when you're uh, recording for different bands? Or? Yeah. Yeah, anything from gospel, jazz, uh, big band, rock. I did Latin rock for a long time. Um, love playing blues, playing with a uh, blues band from time to time um, called the Blues Makers. We play camps quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Cool. And um, so, when did you become a professional drummer? Um, I guess you get, you know, when you get paid, um, you know, you're professional. I think it's also professionalism. I learned it in college, really. Uh, I played a lot of shows in high school. Uh, I think it, it definitely gave me the foundation I needed. But it, in college, it's different. You have to start paying your bills, you start networking with other professionals, and you start getting calls. I think uh, my first regular gig where I got a paycheck was actually at a church in uh, Watauga, Texas. So that was a cool deal because I, I got to um, practice not just what I was working on in school in a practice room, I was able to apply reading music, uh, preparing for rehearsals and uh, playing shows and getting paid for it. So I was doing what I was studying at the same time. So that was probably like uh, my, yeah, it was, I got that call the first day before school, sophomore year in college. I mean, but there was a lot of other calls, but that was the first like regular paycheck. Mm-hmm. And that's how you know your profession. Yeah, I think when you can pay your phone bill and then it becomes, you know, not having to bump so much gas money from dad. Absolutely. You know, it's little by little and before I knew it, uh, I had a family and a daughter and I was paying the bills, um, teaching music and playing music and, um, you know, it all it all happens if you keep at it. All right, that's very interesting. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for uh, sitting down and interviewing with me.